Welcome, everybody. We have a very special week for you. Um, I have to figure out what we're going to call it. We call it Toxin Week. Yes. but Or Surviving. Surviving Toxin. From Toxins. Right. Uh, I'm a uh, consult with a, a nonprofit organization that deals with veterans and also 911 survivors. And when I was on a call recently with Dr. David Root and his son Daniel and Anne Marie Principe, um, that I'm like, I have to have these guys on the podcast and talk about their stories. So Anne Marie is a 9 11 survivor uh, and was, I'm going to let her tell her story, but really at the epicenter of 9-11 and uh, the impact that toxins had on her body were very dramatic and uh, she works with affinity projects to build recognition and identify um, through strategic partnerships community outreach um, and is involved in the new york detoxification project uh dr root has been recognized as the leading expert in sauna-based human detoxification by challenging the status quo. I have no idea what that's like. Um, despite uh, the early disregard from his peers mm -hmm. in repurposing um, L. Ron Hubbard's purification rundown for the treatment of workplace chemical exposure injuries. Um, in 2017, Dr. Root and his son Daniel released their two-week health and wellness detoxination protocol to the public. I'm going to have them talking about it, uh, harnessing the unique properties of niacin, fat-stored toxins are mobilized and then eliminated versus via sweat gland activity from the sauna. I actually have a infrared sauna right next to the chair in my office where I write. And I'm sure after today, I'm going to be going in it a lot more. <laughs> Anyways, um, let's start with Anne-Marie. Can you just tell your story um, a bit and how you got to meet Dr. Root? Absolutely. Um as I said before, I'm a 9-11 survivor. I had a small business downtown. So I was in the street when the first plane hit mm. um, and remained there until the towers came down. Um, so I was one of those nicely dressed people covered in dust running. Um, almost immediately, I felt sick. I took so much dust into my lungs. Um, we were covered. And I couldn't breathe that day. I shook. To the point where I shook my chair. Um, I just couldn't stop shaking. So I went immediately um, to the hospital when I got home. Um, they gave me something to help me breathe. They tried to clean my lungs out. Um, it, it was instantaneous that I got sick. Um, trembling stopped after about a week. But I just couldn't breathe anymore. It probably took me about two or three months before I just couldn't get a full breath of air. Um, you could hear me breathe from 10 or 15 feet away. My daughter likes to say I sounded like Darth Vader. because <laughs> it, it was literally, uh, I just couldn't get air, which is horrific because without air, you just can't function. It impacts um, your ability to think. It impacts your organs. It was very frightening for me. I had a five-year-old daughter, I was mm. a single mom. I didn't know what to do. Um, I went through all kinds of doctors and specialists who had no idea how to treat toxic exposure. And consequently, all they did was throw medication at me, um, inhalers, steroids. Probably um, within six months, I was on 14 medications. Mm -hmm. I used a nebulizer. I used oxygen. I was stuck in my home. I was a prisoner in my home. I could not go out in the heat. I couldn't go out in the cold. I just couldn't breathe enough to do anything. Um, I had been an activist downtown. 
I lost my voice. Um, I still have issues with my voice. My vocal cords were impacted from the dust. Um, at one point, my lungs went to, the left lung was operating at 38% capacity. The right lung was at 48%. So basically, I didn't even have a full lung that I was breathing with. Um, and it was upsetting and traumatizing and, and kept me feeling even more isolated. So it truly impacted me emotionally. I went to one doctor um, where I just, I couldn't even sleep at night. I was sitting up um, to sleep because I would choke if I laid down flat. If I laid down flat, I would choke on my own mucus. And I sat and waited for my doctor for 45 minutes in a paper gown. And he stood outside the door and he said, tell her to go home. I don't know what to do for her. I don't know what she expects. And I was so lost. I thought, what do I do? No one knows how to treat me. No one knows what to do. And by luck, I went to clean out my office. I couldn't keep my company running anymore. And I ran a fr into a friend on the street who told me about this program that was helping first responders. And she said, you know, maybe they'll take you in. Go. This is the gentleman. Go speak to him. And when I initially went to the detox and they spoke to them, I was so sick, they didn't want to take me in. And they were really concerned over liability. What, what would happen to me? They didn't think I'd be able to do it. And basically I said, if you don't do this, I'm going to die. There's no, there's no choice for me here. I'll sign any waiver and I'm an activist and I will come back and fund this place. If you get me well, I will come back and help you to help other people. And I met Dr. Root. Um, they took me into the program. I was so sick that the first responders would stand behind me because they were afraid I was going to fall over. <laughs> I was just, I was yellow. I had jaundiced from the steroids. I was about 40 pounds heavier than I am now. I'd always been really trim and athletic and in shape and popping steroids and sitting at home being depressed is just you eat your feelings. And I ate a lot of feelings. <laughs> and the weight just slowly <clears throat> started to come off. I started to be able to breathe without oxygen or nebulizers. And it took me quite a long time because I was so gravely ill. Um, but eventually I was breathing on my own. And since that time, I've probably had one or two asthma attacks, serious ones. But other than that, I don't use any of the controlled asthma medications. I use a rescue inhaler whenever I need it, which is not that often. Um, I certainly have been through some other illnesses and tribulations since that time. But once again, I feel that the detox didn't just save me my life at that time. It gave me 18 more years that other people didn't have. So it and at was, what point did, so how long after 9-11 did you start the program? Um, I'd say it was March of 2002. Okay, so, March, so about six months or seven months afterwards. Yeah. Um, and what kind of business did you have downtown? I had a model and talent agency downtown. I had about 100 employees. Mm -hmm. So it was really difficult because this was my livelihood. This was a business of 20 years that was successful and took care of me and my daughter. And... I just couldn't do it anymore. I just, I couldn't physically handle working anymore. Yeah. Um, so you lost your health, you lost your income, you lost your identity. Um, I, I almost lost my life. And you almost I lost, lost my your my life, life, but you didn't. I didn't. It's so exciting. And David, I know you're in Sacramento. Tell me, how did the program get to New York and a little bit about um, how you got involved with detoxification? Um, first of all, I spent uh, 20 years in the Air Force as a flight surgeon pilot. And 
Uh, I retired in 1980 and uh, decided I'd uh, go into occupational medicine. So I opened the practice in Sacramento, not knowing a soul, and uh, hung out my shingle, basically, and started seeing patients. And um, early on, probably in <clears throat> uh, early 1982, I had uh, two patients who had been um, painting the inside of a 750,000 gallon water tank with no um, exposure control. Uh, they had no personal protective equipment or anything inside this tank as they were spraying and painting. And they both developed a true toxic encephalopathy. Now I didn't see them until over a year after their exposure. And I'm scratching my head trying to figure out how in the world do I deal with something that exposure that that's long, that far in the past? And what do I do for them? I, there was really not much of anything in the medical literature. And by happenstance, serendipity, I <clears throat> received about the same time a trifold um, uh, folder <clears throat> just in the mail, which indicated, hey, uh, come see our uh, detoxification program. I had never heard of it before. And I thought this is really kind of far out. So I threw it in the trash can and I kept thinking about it. <clears throat> and after three passes in and out of the trash can, I finally called and went down and looked over this program. And it was the Hubbard detoxification program, which had started up in Sacramento, but not related uh, with the Church of Scientology directly in any case. And <clears throat> so I, I went down there and they gave me a binder, a large three ring binder with medical documentation for each step in this program. And <clears throat> I took it home over the weekend and I read through the entire binder and it made sense. When you look at the, at the different steps, uh, the whole scientific background made sense to me. So I said, why not? So I started treating these uh, patients through that program. And though I didn't get the kind of improvement that I'd looked for, I was still getting definite improvement from both of them. And later on incorporated the program into my medical practice. So fast forward to uh, <clears throat> uh, 2001, September, the towers go down. And by this time, I treated probably three or 4,000 patients um, with different types of chemical exposures, most of them um, uh, drug abuse, but uh, some uh, toxic exposures from work. And apparently, some of the first responders who were struggling um, had heard of the program and my uh, telephone started ringing. Uh, hey, can you come help us? So <clears throat> um, my team and I put together a, um, a program. That is to say, we decided we'd go back to New York and at least look over the uh, situation. So by, I think it was January or February, we went back to New York and looked into the situation. <clears throat> and yes, the uh, medical directors that were involved in um, uh, dealing with these um, poor folks who had been exposed uh, felt that uh, maybe it might help, but unfortunately there's no money. So basically they said, uh, go back to the left coast and uh, get some money. And uh, when you're set up, we'll be glad to see what you can do. And I'm sure that they were thinking that, uh, well, we won't see these guys again. So anyway, we did that and we were able to get some private funding, went back and opened up a clinic. And I think it was probably later than March when we finally opened the clinic, but it was not too much after that. <clears throat> um, and we started seeing patients. Anne Marie was one of the early patients and one of the worst that uh, I had seen. I wasn't there full time. I was in and out, back and forth from Sacramento, but uh, I was able to uh, get her involved in the program. And uh, it was an absolute um, um, situation that I was very, very concerned about for her well being. I didn't know whether she would be able to tolerate the program. And indeed, she started uh, improving. 
as did almost all of the other exposed people. So that, in a nutshell, is, is how I got involved in the New York situation. All right. When we come back, we're going to hear uh, a bit about Daniel's story. And then let's talk about the protocol and how specifically you help them. Stay with us. If you're enjoying the Brain Warriors Way podcast, please don't forget to subscribe so you'll always know when there's a new episode. And while you're at it, feel free to give us a review or five-star rating as that helps others find the podcast. If you're considering coming to Amen Clinics or trying some of the brain healthy supplements from BrainMD, you can use the code PODCAST10 to get a 10% discount on a full evaluation at amenclinics.com or a 10% discount on all supplements at brainmdhealth.com. For more information, give us a call at 855 978-1363.